What's up, you guys? Welcome to day seven of Finding Your Strength. You've made it through the week, and today is all about active recovery, active rest. Joining me, as always, is my beautiful friend, Liz. No, we are not sisters, but, you know, I consider her to be a sister from another mister. You've heard that joke before. Um, all jokes aside, we are gonna go through a nice, juicy flow, moving through a bunch of full body exercises, movements that intend to lengthen your body after a full week's worth of strength training. As you can see, we're not on our fit form, so there's no equipment required. You just need a mat and adequate space in your house to kick your legs around and move your body around without bumping to any people or furniture, okay? Um, so what do you say, should we get started? Okay, let's do it. So what I'd like you to do is join me in a quadruped position or a tabletop position, hands just underneath your shoulders and knees stacked underneath your hips. We're just gonna go into a couple rounds of cat cow. So what I'd love for you to do is press your palms into the mat, arch your spine, tuck your chin in towards your chest and you're in that angry cat position, that Halloween cat position. Nice, now from here, take a big inhale, drop your tummy down, look up to the sky. Good, let's do a couple more rounds of that. So really press your palms actively into the floor, almost as if you're resisting away from the floor, arching your spine, and then come back to that cow. Good, take this at your own pace. Just do what feels good, listen to your body. Now your toes can be curled under or they can be relaxed on the top of your mat, whatever feels good. Good. Now try to synchronize your breath to the movement. As you inhale, you drop your belly down, and then as you exhale, you round your spine. Good, this feels so nice after a full six days of strength training on your fit form. You are investing in your body with these lovely body weight only stretches. Good, let's just do one more of each and then you'll meet me back in that quadruped position, back in that neutral spine position. Good. Now from here, what I'd love for you to do, again, spine nice and neutral. You're gonna tuck your toes under if they aren't already tucked under, and then press yourself up into a downward facing dog. So, downward facing dog. To find your perfect down dog, you wanna actually find yourself in a high plank, and then pike your hips up to the ceiling, pressing away from the floor and you wanna to try to drop your heels down to the floor as best as you can, really feeling that stretch down the backs of your legs and your hamstrings. Good, now if it feels good for you, you can pedal the feet. I personally love to do this movement right here. Yeah, that's it. Join me back into that high plank position whenever you are ready. Just hold it here for a few moments. Good, big breath in, exhale out the mouth, and then meet me again in that downward facing dog. Good, again, pedal the feet, right to left, left to right. Nice, and then roll yourself back into that high plank position. We're gonna tuck your elbows in nice and close and then lower yourself all the way down to your mat. Good, untuck your toes, keeping your hands just underneath your shoulders and then peel your chest off the floor, looking up to the ceiling for this nice cobra stretch. Good, exhale, lower yourself back down. Let's do that a few more times at your own pace. Big inhale, peel your torso off the floor. Good. Again, take this at your own pace. Lower down, and let's just do one more round right here. So again, chest lifts up. Elbows tucked in nice and, close, nice and close. Good, lower yourself on down. Now from here, I want you to press your palms into the floor, push your hips into your heels, and then meet me in a child's pose. So take your knees nice and wide, make room for your tummy, and then walk your hands out in front of you as long as you can, so long as you're not hurting yourself, and then lower your head down to your mat. Good. From here, I want you to meet me back in that all fours, that tabletop position, whenever you are ready. And then we're gonna press ourselves back up into downward facing dog. So toes tuck under, hips come up, pike your hips up to the ceiling, 
And then again, pedal out your feet. You might need to make a little bit more room for yourself. Again, the perfect way to find your perfect down dog is to find yourself in that plank position. And then again, pushing your hips up to the sky. Now guys, from here, keeping your hands pressing on the floor, I want you to extend your right leg up to the ceiling, nice and tall, point your toe. And then from here, bring your right knee in towards your nose, and then drop your right knee down behind your right hand. We're going into one of my favorite stretches, a pigeon stretch. So from here, you can, if you wish, to lower your torso down to the mat. Otherwise, you can stay nice and high as Liz is doing. And if it feels good for you, you can always bring your forearms down and rest your head, your forehead onto your forearms. Good, now you'll notice my left leg is extended nice and long behind me. I'm kind of obsessed with this stretch. It's one of my favorites. Good, and whenever you are ready, prop yourself back on up. We're gonna bring our feet back into that downward dog. So tuck your left toe under. You can kick your right foot back to the sky and then lower your right foot back down to the floor, downward facing dog, pedaling the feet out right to left, left to right. Good, left leg extends up nice and high to the ceiling. Good, left knee to your nose, and then drop your left knee down behind your left hand. Now you might need to walk your left foot out a bit to make room for your hip flexor, and then uncurl your right toe. Now, same deal on this side. What you did on the right side, try to make sure you do it on the left side to even everything out. So you can walk your hands out if that feels good. You can drop your elbows down. And then if you wish, if you're super flexible and super mobile, you can even rest your head down on your forearms. Good. All right, whenever you are ready, walk yourself back on up. Tuck your right toe under. We're gonna push ourselves back up, lifting the left leg up nice and high, lowering the left leg down, pedaling your feet again, right to left, left to right. Yeah, that's it. Good, now from here, I'd love it if you dropped your knees down to the floor. We're back to that tabletop position, that quadruped position. Now from here, we're gonna do something called thread the needle. So you're gonna take your right hand and let's extend it up to the sky like so. And then from here, take your right hand and thread it through the space between your left arm and the floor. And you're bringing your right shoulder all the way down to the floor. Good, palm faces up towards the sky. Nice, let's come back and let's do that again. So reach on up, right arm extends up to the ceiling. And then as you exhale, thread the arm through, again, resting your right ear down on the floor, if that feels good. Good, now if you wish, you can always take your left hand and extend it out nice and long in front of you. Excellent, walk your left hand back if you did take that modification. Extend your right arm up one last time. Beautiful, and then bring your right hand down. We gotta do that same stretch on the other side to make sure everything is evened out. Extend your left, leg, left arm up to the ceiling and then thread it on through. Gosh, yeah, it feels so nice to slow everything down feeling the strength of our body, really thanking it for all the work it's put in over the last few days. When you're ready, press on up through your right hand, extend your left arm up again, round two of thread the needle, and again, place it through the space between your torso and your arms. Nice. Good, from here, bring yourself back on up. We're gonna extend the left arm up one last time. And then from here, place your hand back down on the floor. Let's press ourselves back into a child's pose. So sit back into your heels, make room for your tummy by spreading your knees out nice and wide. Walk your hands out in front of you. 
Good, now we're gonna go into a side body stretch. Let's walk our hands over to the right side, feeling that stretch on our left side body. Nice, let's walk it back to center. We'll spend a few more moments here in child's pose again before we go into that side body stretch on the left side. Whenever you're ready, walk your hands on over. Nice job, walk your hands back. Final time we'll be spending in child's pose right here. If it feels good to move your torso from left to right, side to side, keeping your hands stationary, pressing down into the floor, rooting them into the ground. Good, whenever you are ready, walk your hands back to your legs. You're in a nice kneeling position. Swing your legs all around. Come back to a nice seated position and reflect back on what you just did. Guys, that was 10 minutes of active recovery flowing through a bunch of yoga-inspired moves. Liz and I are so excited, so proud of you for making your way through seven days worth of strength training. So really, a job well done to you. In fact, girl, let's give ourselves a nice little high five right here. I encourage you to take a look at all the content on the Teeter Move Library to get involved and see what some of the other programs are. There's loads of really cool, really interesting ways to get yourself fit. Now, having said that, don't lose out on the momentum. Jump back in tomorrow and let's hit day one again for another week of seven days of strength training. Perhaps consider adding a bit more resistance or maybe even doing a bit more reps to make this next week a bit more challenging. From myself and Liz, thank you so much and congrats on a job well done. We'll see you soon.